Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about calculating machining time with some examples. First of all, what is a machining time? Why do we even need to calculate it? Well, in today's modern world, most items are mass produced with some sort of machinery. Part of the process in manufacturing, design, and planning is to understand the time it takes each machine to add value to the part. These times can then be added to manual labor times to determine the total cycle time to produce a part. Here are some components of common machines so that you can understand the terminology being used. Axes refers to more than one axis. This is the direction the tool or the table holding the part will move in. The most common three axes you'll hear about are the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Left to right, up and down, backwards and forwards, and it all depends what your viewpoint is. The spindle, refer to the number two on the picture on the right side, this is the part of the machine that usually holds the cutting tool. For many machine processes, you will be concerned with spindle speeds. The blade, drill bit, arc, jet, cutter, refer to the number one on the diagram, and there can be many other names as well. This is the part of the machine that interacts with the part, depending on what type of machine you're doing. So a blade can cut, a drill bit can drill a hole, etc. It's important to note as well that presses, injection molders, they'll have different components. So the RPMs generally don't exist. On a press or injection molder, you don't have something rotating usually, so the revolutions per minute won't matter. But these other machines will have different speeds and things to measure that will matter for production. Now I'll go over some terms and acronyms to know. FPM, feet per minute. This generally refers to the linear speed of a tool or work table. Setup, the process and associated time and materials that is required to have a production machine running regularly. Setup typically involves a trained employee or team member of maintenance working on the machine to make sure it's running adequate parts. Arbor, a clamp of sorts that generally holds the tool being used, similar to a spindle. Often the words are interchanged freely. End mill, generally a high-tech drill bit or cutting tool used on a CNC mill. People we even call CNC mills end mills. I heard that pretty frequently in my education and in industry. Turning. This refers to machining when the tool is generally stationary, but the part rotates. The tool will still move, but only slightly. It will move forward or left and right into a rotating part to remove material that way. Handling. This refers to all the manual parts of machining. The operator loading the part, cleaning the part or the machine, locking a mechanism on the machine, etc. To figure these times out, you'll have to perform a traditional time study. I have a video on the topic. Value added. Pretty much all manufacturing is a value added process. Any service that changes a product is value added. Unless the company is changing a part in a way that the customer does not desire or will not pay any extra for. This is pretty rare, but I believe it does happen occasionally. Changeover. The process of changing the tooling or settings of a machine to switch what the machine does. This is generally when a new part is being worked on. You must take similar considerations to a setup because if you think about it, changing from one part to a different part really is the same effect of just setting up for that second part in the first place. So here's some machine time calculation examples. Simple. Machine time of something cutting an object. You would take the length of piece of metal to be cut, so how long is the thing you're cutting, divided by the linear cutting speed. So imagine you're just running a plank of wood over a table saw. Say it's six inches long, and you cut at an inch a second. It would take you six seconds to cut through that plank of wood. Pretty basic, right? Another simple example would be drilling. You would take the depth of the metal divided by the drilling or tapping machining rate, which is the feed rate times the number of revolutions per minute. So say you need to drill through something three inches thick, but your drilling rate is only half an inch per minute. 
it's going to take you six minutes to get through that piece of metal. And the depth of metal, it doesn't just have to be metal. It can be wood, plastic, any other material. And that feed times RPM, to put that into more simple terms, imagine the feed of your machine is 0.01 inches per revolution. That's the feed rate. So 0.01 inches deeper every time it rotates once. And say your RPM is 50 revolutions a minute. That feed rate times your RPM would say every minute you're going to drill down a depth of 0.5 inches. A more complex example would be machine time of something being turned equals the length of piece times pi times the diameter of the part divided by the feed rate times the cutting speed. So the top part of this equation is essentially saying what's the circumference of the part that's being turned and how long is it? So that will help you determine how much material you will want to remove. You will then divide that by the feed rate, so how quickly is the part spinning, times the cutting speed. So how quickly are you going to move that tool into or out of the part, or left to right, so up and down the length of the part. I don't have a background in tooling engineering. I've only taken a few basic classes in it, being a process engineer. But something I found that really helps when calculating more complex machine times is first understanding the geometry of the part you are cutting and the tooling you are using. Only through understanding the geometry will you begin to understand the machining equations. It very frequently comes down to circular objects or rectangular objects. So when you see pi or diameter or radius, begin to understand that a lot of times it's referring to an area or a circumference of sorts. Speeds can mean different things. How fast something is rotating, how fast it's moving in and out, or left and right. If the equation seems too complex, first just break it down into its different parts and try to understand. Is this part of the equation referring to a circular motion? a linear motion, the part moving, the machine moving. If you can understand the geometry and what separate parts of the equation are asking for, you can begin to put it together and see the entire picture. So up to this point you may have wondered, don't a lot of machines or software already give these time estimates? Well the answer to that is yes. There are multiple pieces of software that give estimates for machining times. I even found a few online Excel sheets that you could purchase that would do these calculations for you as well, provided you could input some of the data yourself. A lot of current computer-aided design softwares actually have this as a feature as well. So Inventor, SolidWorks, programs like that most likely have a feature that will allow you to look at your part and calculate some machining time estimates. Of course, with any piece of software, it's beneficial to understand what the calculations are actually doing, what formulas they're using, and it's good to understand the inputs. There are some additional things to consider. Machine time calculating is just one subject under the much larger subject of cost analysis, which is an integral part of business, along with items such as product estimating, engineering economy, operation estimating, labor analysis, material analysis, and others. Think about everything a business does to produce a part. You have all these different costs involved. Machine costs are just one part of that. There are some additional machining costs to consider as well. It's not just the time of machining that costs money and the labor involved. There are additional things such as new tools, tool changing costs, and just the general cost of machining based on the parts wearing down, that is, the parts to the machine wearing down. Look at that first graph on the left. I think that is the idea that many people have in their heads with machining. You think, as we increase our cutting speed, our cost per unit is going to go down. That machining cost is going to decrease because it's quicker. While that may be true, let's look at the other two graphs and consider what additional costs there may be. The second and third graphs show that as your cutting speed increases, your tool changing cost and your general tool costs are both going to increase. Well, why is that? That's because running the machine faster is going to make our parts wear out sooner. Our drill bits, our saws, 
all the machine parts are going to wear out sooner. So although you're producing parts quicker, you have to spend more money in the same amount of time just because you're running those machines at a faster rate. Many machine components are only manufactured to be run at certain speeds as well, so it's always important to consider the safety aspects with machining. So it's a simple solution to just say, hey, run the machine faster, we'll increase production, but consider these additional costs as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you now know a little bit more about how to estimate machining times and the value of doing so. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to do a beginning engineer's video at least every month or two. Have a great day.